I'll say it again. Um, trying to be unique is paradoxical. You're already unique, so just create. From Kona Jude and Dibia, you mean I'm seeing this I'm Velisen Ngango Melis Wesizwe, formerly known as Lozi Matonsel, bringing you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth SA Street culture, but also formalize the street hustle. On today's episode, we have Terence Maluleg. Oh, we're not NSA. NSA, yeah. Why am I hated to think it's Kez? Nah, that's cool. Writing room, you gotta fix that. <laughs> 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 so you go to NSA, you're pursuing your art. Yeah. How, how does that translate to black parents to say, yo, we actually say, go do art? You can yeah, be a doctor. It's tricky. Because, <laughs> like, it's tricky. We all come from the hood, and in the hood, they're always like, yo, you need something that's secure, secure. Yeah. Please don't play around. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I mean, it's a great place to start because it's like that's the that's the genesis, you know, that's the foundation. Um, yeah, I go to NSA, um, but with so much resistance mm. from especially my dad, you know, because the dad is like, no, there's, there's got to be order, you know, there's, you, you, you are growing as a guy, you're growing as a man, you have to be responsible. Art in that time is irresponsible. <laughs> in his, in his, you know, from his perspective, it's very irresponsible because it's like you're pursuing fun. It's a hobby. What are you pursuing? Fun? Is that what you're doing? So that's, that's, the, that's the, the main parent that I had to kind of wrestle with, <laughs> you know, in this, in this kind of journey. Um, but he, my, my, I had to, you know, I had to kind of convince him. My responsibility was to convince him that I'm really good at this. I'm really confident that this will be something. And so I went to NSA. Um, I did well in art. <laughs> who, knows, who knows about the other subjects? Who knows how, how, I, how, how I performed in the other subjects? But in art, I really, the most important thing, I really performed. So I, I convinced him. I convinced him that this is something. He was still not convinced because, you know, that's still the school period. It's still high school, you know. Um, what happens? How do you get a job? What is the job? Mm. Um, what's life after art? What's life? They're gonna do drugs. Ooh, cause that's that's the association, you know. But um, yeah, and then that's I went to the animation school, and then that's where I started pursuing animation, um, and then it kept on going and kept on improving. Um, luckily, I, I got a bursary to. I got a bursary to study at the animation school. Mm. So, you know, it alleviates some pressure off him, even though, you know, he's still looking closely like, man, I hope this turns into something. Um, and dropped out. Of animation school? I dropped out of animation the school. The bursary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry, NVF. But, um, you know, it was part of, I, I dropped out because I had the opportunity to start working. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a good thing, but, you know... You transition to the next step. The next step, but I had six months left, you know. I had I had done all my studies. I was about to get my degree. Is that your toughest decision in life? So far, it's probably one of them. It's probably one of them. We'll get into the others for sure, but um, it's probably one of them. So six months before I graduate, I drop out. You know, I have the opportunity to start working. I'm, I can see that the project I'm about to work on has some sort of importance in my career, in life, and what it means for, for us who's coming from, um, you know, Soweto, about to create our own shows, and man, we'll get into it, but you know, mm. it was, I had to do it, I had to drop out. Yeah. 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 Is that just you being a tiny there? It's not just that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tiny stand, but you know, it's like you meet you 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 are presented with 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 moments in life where you're just like this is a hard decision to make you know it's a hard decision to make but you can tell and not only did i drop out i dragged my friend to drop out with me your best friend my best friend smanga yeah yeah you know that's how much conviction i had in this idea in in, in this like um what we were about to pursue like we had the, we were working Jesus, we're working right across. We're, we're right here in the, at the printer. Yeah. The printer filmed. Cajiso. Um, uh, Cajiso uh, with Isaac. Um, so we were actually right here. Um, so I, I was, we had this project that we were um, assigned to. And, you know, it, one thing I, to go back to the, the, the first question, it's like the best thing you could do as a young artist is just 
starting out in a very small, intimate company where you are able and you are given so much responsibility, mm. so much responsibility that you just like, my goodness, the team relies on me to do this, to do um, characters, environment, texturing for 3D assets. You know, like you are really carrying so much of the load as a team because it's a small team and it's quite intimate. But that, as a young artist, while you're able to learn as fast as possible, gives you that, that acceleration. It gives you that fire to go like, you know, I, I get to learn so much. I learned, I learned more about show running there at uh, the printer because I could see how things are working. You know, you, 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 things are not hidden. They're not. It's not like a big company where you know you're. This is your role, and mm. anything outside of your role is none of your business. No, everything was your business. You're not operating in a silo. Yeah, it's, it's a group effort. Everything was your business. So I got to learn so much from that. So that's really what I wouldn't have people shy away from small companies um, that have like intimate small teams. You get to really learn and accelerate your growth from there. Small yeah. company, not a startup. <laughs> <laughs> Let you hate it on startups. Any, I mean, you know, startups and invoices. It's another episode. Though. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, coming from the hood, yeah. Part of the founders of Cassie Sketchbook. Why was that important for you to give back? Um, it's the concept of. Because one, every time niggas leave the hood, never want to go back. Never. Yeah. Because of the traumas, whatever happened, mm. never want to go back. Yeah. Why was it I vital it. for you? Um, it's, 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 it's about, it's this concept of lifting as you rise, you know, because you don't want to now get there and now feel like you, you it, lifting up a community t- takes more than, you know, capital. It's like, it's a personality almost. You have to be that person. So mm. kind of myself and, and, and Smangaliso Subaya, um, we have this Gassi Sketchbook initiative where we um, go around the hood um, and we, you know, the, the idea is to create clubs around that uh, run themselves with mentors that can visit and uh, mentor the kids in, 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 in drawing, animation, um, just the career around this industry of animation and beyond really because um, you know we had this idea and now we invite so sometimes we even invite them to the studio in um, August House because I have a studio in August House um, and so we kind of just sit down learn fundamentals we invite parents as well because they, they are the really important part to we have to convince the parents as well you know mm. bridging the gap no one bridge for you yeah exactly Exactly that. Um, really educating the parents and having them build confidence in this thing that is um, animation that is very new to South Africa. Um, and so that's what Gassi Sketchbook is. And it aims to, what we also do is, so the basic is like we get them sketchbooks. We invite all the kids, we get them sketchbooks and uh, they have to fill them up. And, you know, the process of filling up a sketchbook starts off scary as a young artist it's all blank pages you know so it's a thing you have to face and the more you sketch the better you become there's no there's no cheating it yeah. the, the more you sketch the more you focus on your fundamentals and then anatomy and all of that study it as much as you can study you know while you are studying out a thing don't worry about being too perfect study get rid of all the bad drawings get rid of all the bad podcasts get rid of <laughs> Get rid of all, you know, get them out of the way as quick as possible. Mm. Yeah. The faster you start, the sooner you get better. The sooner you get better. Get rid of all of them. You work in corporate, the small company. When does Travel Universe start your partnership in a small? Um, that, starts, that starts immediately after we get... Um, so the project we were working on at um, the printer fell through. I dropped out to work on this project. How many months in? <laughs> um, so, why well, I'm getting nervous about this conversation because you know I had to convince my parents that this is a value. You know, it's this is the this thing. is the one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, this is the one, and now the project, the project falls through. Um, how many months in? It was quite some time. You know, it, we I think it was. 
I know the months. It was 18 months. 18 months in? 18 months in. So it's the six months after you dropped out and then the year after. Yeah. So your parents saw all your classmates graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw all. <laughs> <laughs> How does Manga feel? Um, at this point, we are confident. Oh my God. That's the thing about, that's the thing about knowing, you know, having that deep sense. Jay-Z talks about that, mm. knowing. We had a deep sense of knowing that now we got it, bro. So that's where the birth of Tribal Universe happens. Um, right after we dropped out, you know, we we like, let's create something. Let's create something that speaks to us. And we are quite visually driven. Mm. So we create characters, we create environments. We also create stories for these worlds. But mainly, we are visual developers. So... The, we we started kind of like okay we will be the guys companies come through with their stories and we will develop the characters we will create this bible so the bible is the thing you would go out yeah. in the festivals to pitch a project um and so you know we we would create the characters and we would create everything around this world to get this project beautiful and get people excited about it to actually option it and make this show hmm. so that's how we started Tribal Universe okay cool I'm gonna have to fast forward yeah how do you go from watching Disney to creating for Disney that's still wild to me yeah that's still very wild to me man I won't lie man like I'm um, I'm very 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 grateful for being able to be recognized to do something like that to do to create for man i used to watch growing up I, I used to watch all these cartoons you know from um you know duffy duck they all what the, Mickey what Mouse Club out. yeah that's you told, uh, you're that's, older than yeah, me because yeah, now i'm going to warner brothers but anyway <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well bleep that out <laughs> <laughs> that's chill it's all right man like that's it that's it's funny <laughs> but I, all these cartoons you know um i didn't watch mickey mouse as much the mouse is going to kill me for this, but um, yeah, like all the Disney stuff that I grew up on, like they, they were like, it was impossible to reach. It was like, how did they even do this? So to go from that in the hood mm. to creating stories for Disney, working on characters that are on the TV, you know that it, I'm very very grateful for that, and um, it's it's it, it's a it's a testament to just practicing and really honing into your skill and being having that knowing and having confidence in that your skill is valuable and it will lead you somewhere. And it led me to led me to work with the best in the world. It's really really sorry. Yeah, like that's crazy. Like. What happened? You got that confirmation. You're like, yo, like, yeah. Is it a confirmation? You know, because is it a confirmation? Because um, you know, you you practice, you 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 practice your skill, you you get better, you get better. You don't recognize them because they come in small doses. It doesn't just. It's not just Disney. It comes in small doses where you're working on smaller project and you're getting recognized, um, and you you keep growing and you you kind of there's a period where you just put your head down and you just keep working and you look up and you're like oh man i really created some really cool stuff for different cool projects and now i have the opportunity to create my thing with disney now i'm directing a whole short for disney and disney plus um but it all happens in small increments and you know you just have to just it takes it takes long it takes it takes for someone who was, I can I can get impatient about growth because I'm 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 Same. yeah I can get impatient about growth. Because you see it already. Yeah, you you are able man. That's 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 really powerful to be able to see it to start with because you see it and you see how it looks and you're like, man, I want to get to the point where I draw a head a certain way, you know, naturally. Um, but you gotta put in that work and so yeah. The work you can't cheat, man. Yeah, you, you, can't, you, can't cheat, cheat, you can't cheat the 10,000 hours. You can't cheat the 10,000 hours, man. You cannot. You cannot. 
and you shouldn't and you you know um it's only once you've earned those hours and the the time where you kind of start figuring out that okay now that hard work is done now i need to work smart you know but you have to work hard first you know yeah. there's a there's a period where you have to work really hard and kind of learn the fundamentals of this industry and then you can start moving around and making certain things easier um, for the same amount you know balancing things so you can do more so yeah. you can do more um, but yeah man like right now working on this Disney short um, I'm learning quite a bit as a director it's my first directing um, project with um, Disney, with Disney. <laughs> mentioned Disney <laughs> <laughs> so I'm learning quite a bit you know I'm, I'm learning from you know it's not just about my main thing which was character designing and world building I'm learning how to manage people um, manage teams being patient with their you know you are also lifting up um, artists who are learning how to draw and learning how to draw black characters mm. that's a really big one um, and you're kind of guiding them through this journey and you, you send them as much references. So, cause it's, it's, it's not about making the characters beautiful. You know, when you're car- drawing black characters, it's not about making them beautiful. It's about making them authentic. It's about making them, um, it's about being honest, being faithful to their features, you know, acknowledging all the little bits, uh, of the things that you find them beautiful. Mm. You look at a person, you're like, man, that thing that is you that is quirky that is kind of different from others is the same thing that makes you beautiful um you know i think about this very very deeply it's like you don't want to remove the thing that is that makes a person unique because um you think you're removing you know filters are cool and all of that but you don't want to remove the core the core you don't want to remove the thing that makes a person beautiful it might not be um, it might not be conventional, but you, the moment you remove it, it's like you are now putting yourself in a... That's the thing I, the, about filters. You know, you put a filter and now everybody looks the same. You know, it like, it, it's because it's a filter. It's not tailored to your face. It's but tailored that, to one face. It's that visual identity. <laughs> you know, we will get it. But, you know, it's like... And, and it, it's okay. Like, it's cool, but... It's like you don't want to remove the thing that makes you unique. Mm. So it, 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 it's also a practice as you grow that you, you want to now keep acknowledging the things that make you beautiful and lean into them. And the more you recognize the things that make you beautiful, it's the more you kind of... That's the thing about recognizing things that are beautiful. They make the, the not beautiful stand out even more. So you kind of remove yourself from the things that aren't beautiful. Um, and, and, and beauty in the sense that it's like it's like navigating life it's like when you see a dark alley you don't want to go into the dark alley because you recognize it as something that mm. isn't a place to go so you need to have that compass to go like okay this is a, an opportunity and it's a good one versus a bad one so that's the idea of recognizing beauty in the world a, a place that can really accelerate your growth and have you become someone who will have an impact in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. My next one, the one I'm trying to figure out, Mm. but for future, it's an early reference. How do you create art without going to the status quo? Because there's a certain type of art that's Mm. flying right now. There's a certain type of narrative and there's a certain type of artist that's required now whether it's racially ambiguous, mm. you know, certain things, certain aesthetic where it looks smoother, it looks softer, it's more illustrator based. Mm. How did you navigate to then create your own style? The best answer to that is you have to dig deep. Um, you have to dig deep into, because the moment you dig deep, you are able to kind of see what are the things that are influences and the things that are kind of put onto you as things that uh, sh- that should be done as a new thing, as a new trend, as a new way of going. And you have to dig deep and find out, you know, okay, who am I and what do I enjoy? 
Mm. And the more you kind of lean into that, the, you, I've always said this, it's like being unique is paradoxical. You, trying to be unique is paradoxical. You're already different. You're already a, living a, an experience that is n- literally unique to yours. So live that through. Dig deep into what your experience is and leave that through, you know, and, 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 and really focus and lean into the things that you find interesting because, you know, you do something that feels right, you know, you, you draw a face that feels right and you, you look at a flower that, that is beautiful and there's something that, that inside you kind of feels like, man, I connected to that thing, I connected to that. Lean towards those things. The, the thing that you don't lean, that, that, that doesn't immediately evoke an interest you can you can can step away from it but the moment you find something that is interesting and you really enjoy lean into it that's where you find some unique stuff and um you know drawing from who you are that's where you find either the unique stories so for animation that's where you find the unique stories where you know you have your own experience that the world doesn't know Hmm. you know Soweto is a, is, a, is a small place, but it has impacted the whole world, you know, in, 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 in a sense. So people don't know the experience of having grown up in Soweto, but then they have that, um, they can relate to the, your human story. They can relate to that. They can relate to the things that you saw growing up, um, the people you met, the personalities that are around the hood, you know, they can relate to that. Um, so bring that forth and um, the world will relate to that core story. Um, don't, don't try to be anything other than yourself. Um, and that's hard. It's hard to face yourself, man. It's hard to kind of dig deep and go like, man, is that what I want to show the world? But it takes courage and you got to do it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's, to answer your question, that's where the, um, that's where you kind of, you know, you're not wavered by a trend. You, 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 are, you kind of keep doing you, you do you and it, it, it becomes evident in your work it shows that okay you're just following your own path and it will stand out against the rest so what was the decision for you to say I'll take the internet route with doing NFTs as opposed to being a gallery signed artist the idea about NFTs that for me it's a, it's a very young space but the, 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 the possibilities of being able to create someone um, create something directly for your audience it's just so powerful to me it's like um, and and the idea of you are able to trace your work wherever it goes as, a, as an artist is something that we, we value because as fine artists what would happen is that you would be you, you'd lose track of the work and you'd lose that connection um, that direct co- co- connection to you you know mm. it, it once it's out in the world, anyone can do anything with it, you know, and you are kind of left out of that. So with NFTs, the power is that you are always connected to it. You know, when you sell an NFT and it, you, 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 and it gets sold, you, you, you also earn a, a portion. So that, that for me as an idea, I was like, man, I will drop everything. I will drop everything to just work on this idea of creating a legacy for myself and um, building my, my, my fine art world in, in the NFT space. Um, with that said, it's like, it's still a very young space. A lot of people, because your responsibility as an artist, you have to also introduce this world to your collectors. Hmm. Um, it's not just the artist, it's the collectors finding value in what an NFT is. They can also benefit and attach their name to a certain art piece forever. Um, and you know that that has some value, but it's the it's the artist's responsibility to convince the collectors that okay, this route also benefits the collectors. You know, you you are able to share artwork on these platforms, and it's quite visible to everybody. People can see your collection. You can you can immediately receive offers. You don't have to put it out there. You can receive offers on your collection, and you don't have to accept it. But the the the, the ability to just seamlessly do that is just cool. And it, you know, NFT right now is about art, but NFT as a as a technology is about everything. Mm. 
it's about everything it's 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 a way to move money it's a mo- mm, it's a way to <laughs> <laughs> it's a way to uh it's a way to move money assets around quite seamlessly with no um we don't we not that much friction you know so it's a very very powerful tool mm. yeah and then Every up and coming artist asks themselves this. I'm sure you asked yourself this mm. when you were in high school. How do you price your art? Hmm. That's a good one that I haven't even figured out yet. <laughs> Jesus, I don't think I've figured that out yet. You know? How do you price your artwork? It's it's a thing you have to test, you know? You are it's a it's a balance between it's a balance between your audience um you know the kind of artwork you you do the time you spend um who knows about your artwork you know uh it's a balance of that and you test it out you you would you know you'd start with a small price and see um you'd start with a small price and see how many people come and how 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 many people kind of are willing to pay for the art piece you have um, and then from there you you have to keep marketing your work you have to keep putting it out there you have to put put it out to people's feeds you know you don't, you, you can't hide value that's the thing I say you, you you shouldn't hide value you show your value and then people make offers and then from there you can start you know growing your rate you know um, for me as a as an animator and a character designer, how I started was, you know, I would have an hourly rate, I would have a, a daily rate, uh, and you know, it would start off at a very somewhat of a affo- affordable price. And the more I grow, the more my skill grows. People, people would come, you know. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would, I'd attract more clients, and the more clients I'd attract, the more I would have like so many clients, and I'd, only one of me. And so then I increased the price to kind of almost nuke the other clients. You know, it's like you you you, you will increase you you'll find a balance, but you'll increase your your rate, and then some clients will fall through. But you only need the ones that you need. Um, and so it's a it's a it's a thing that you you have to also earn. You know, the higher prices are earned. You don't you don't cheat. You don't you can't cheat that. Um, yeah. It, I, I have to stress this enough. The skill, you have to keep growing, man. You have to keep your skill at a very high level to attract good clients. Mm. Yeah. So, title of the podcast okay. is Kona Juten De Beer. Repeat that? The title of the podcast yeah. is Kona Juten De Beer. Oh, yes. Which is the poster child for what Pram is. This is where we see the youth. This is where we see the future. Mm-hmm. This is where icons have been built. This is where great ideas have been told. This is where the greatest sneakers have been released. First these is here. Mm. You now you're a fan of sneakers. What does Bram mean to you? Besides going to school here. What does Bram mean to me? Yeah. Yo, Bram is a lot to me, man. It it it's it's almost an identity. Bram is an identity, man. It's you 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 found yourself here. Mm. Man, growing up, um, going to school in NSA, moving around the spaces a lot, you found yourself here, man. You would see the art on the walls. It was for you. This place was for you, man. I don't, I, you know, places are not, they're not for you. You know, you go to a place and it's for anyone else but you. Brahm was for me, man. You know, like it, in a sense that anyone was welcome here. Um, any kid was welcome here. You know, you would, I would just come here just to walk past and not buy anything and not look and you know I just see people that were were me like this way this is where you find your your clan you you find your your family you'd find your friends who have who who, who think like you who are, who are creative in their own ways and so Brahm was a home you know and and for me it's like it's 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 it, it, I was I was not like a I wouldn't say like a what is this an immediate cool kid I'm not I'm not I can't I, it's hard it comes it's not it's not like I'm not I'm an introvert I'm mm. not um extroverted you know so but 
anyone was welcome here. Yeah? You know, it was like about it, it was about what you are. Like deep down, you are a creative, um, and so you would share, you would sit down and talk to your friends, share creative ideas, um, see artwork everywhere, sneaker shops. Um, you know, I remember the playground was down there, Frank and man. you know, shout out the mayor. Shout out to the mayor. You know, we'd work on projects together in terms of like. You know, he was also quite receptive of different art forms. Mm. Um, and so, you know, while I was at Deprente, the early, early days of my being at Deprente, um, you know, we'd work on some animation and he would just come up and be like, oh, are you keen to do like an animation thing with your friends? Yeah. And it's like, that's cool, man. I've seen people really come into your, to your mm. store and kind of view. So I'm like, oh, I'd like some of the people who you and you it's like you don't want to just show people your work you want to show cool people your, your work. work yeah man it's like these are cool people and so I want them to see my work so they can think I'm cool too um, and you know that was cool you know that's that's the thing we, we were kind of doing all these things for our peers you know I'm not doing this for I'm not the guy in Stockholm <laughs> you know, I'm doing it for my friends who really, really, really appreciate this. So if if they say they if this is cool, then it it has to be cool because they are cool, and I know they 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 think deeply about this idea of cool and um um how can I say this? They think deeply about creativity. They really appreciate it. They purists. Yeah, they really they purist and they really dig deeply about creativity and uh, they really appreciate it and they put in the time their clothes and their work to really have that creativity come out and they, it, all, it all comes out in a unique way in the individual even though you know you'd see Brahmin you'd see one personality but if you're in there you are seeing you are everybody. seeing everybody in a, and they're all different and it's all beautiful and it's all vibrant um, so that's really what Brahm was and then to round it up, I have one thing I'm asking of you. What's your word to the youth? What's my word to the youth? I'll say it again. Um, trying to be unique is paradoxical. You're already unique, so just create. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Taco. <laughs>